This is a teaching moment. Hey guys, welcome to the show. It's Hesio, once again. If you have happened to stumble upon this video by chance, you won't see any gameplay. And that can be incredibly boring if you're not interested in learning this deck. So if you want to check out the gameplay, I also made a video for that. You can check out that in the info box up there and also in the deck description down below where you can also find the deck code. So the very first question you should ask about a deck at the beginning is always, what does this deck even do? This is a Death Rattle Hunter. You could also say this is a variation on a mid-range Hunter. We are trying to get on board. We will be very slow at the start, but then we take off around turn four, five, six, and build up a huge board with which we are going to kill the opponent. To give you a grasp on how this deck works, I will first talk about uh, what the strength and weaknesses of this deck are. Then I will start talking about the cards which I will break down to minions and spells. Uh, I will further break down the minions into death rattle minions and utility minions and afterwards I will talk about the spells that we run in this deck. And in the end I will talk about the mulligan and afterwards I will just wrap up the video. So you can check out the several parts in the timeline down below because I I'm a nerd and I divide all my videos into chapters. So let's talk about the weaknesses and the strong parts of this deck first. I want to emphasize, of course I don't know because there's not enough data yet on HS Replay to support this, but I would claim that this is actually a tier 2 deck right now. It is quite strong and you can actually climb with this. I am at rank 3 right now and I'm planning on taking this puppy to legend. But we will see if I accomplish that, but I guess it is going to be the case because I do have a positive win rate. But let's talk about the weaknesses first. The biggest weakness of this deck is that it is a very slow deck. And being a slow deck, it, we won't be able to kill uh, certain opponents quick enough, which for example are combo decks like Quest Mage, which is vanishing from ladder by now, by the way, or Garat Rogue, which is also uh, a very hard deck to play and kills us before we can kill them usually. So that is a big weakness of this deck. Another big weakness is that we rely heavily on our death rattle minions, the early ones in particular, like Bloated Python and Nerubian Egg. If we don't draw them, then our deck is pretty much dead. We do have still a fighting chance to come back, but we do rely so heavily on these buddies that if we don't draw them quick enough, we will be in trouble. But where there are weaknesses, there are of course also strong sides. And the biggest strong side of this deck is that it plays very well into a lot of aggressive decks and also other board focused decks in the meta right now. For example against Agro Taunt Druid. Um, yes, we do have a slow start, but we do have a lot of utility that can bring us back on board and gain the advantage. And that is a lot of times just the case. We do have a big advantage against Agro Taunt Druid against Paladin and against Quest uh, Pirate Warrior. And that is really, really nice because they have a tendency to swarm the ladder right now, as I can see at least. And uh, if you play this deck, you will have an advantage against those decks and will farm wins. I don't want to say farm wins, but you are quite favored against those decks. And that is very, very nice. All right, enough foreplay. Let's start talking about the deck and what it does actually. I want to start off with the death rattle minions that we actually run. And the most important ones I already mentioned are Nerubian Egg and Bloated Python. These minions are very, very slow. Nerubian Egg, for example, doesn't have a tag, but we do have means to activate it. And we will come to that when we talk about the utility minions that we also run in this deck. And also we do have spells that help us accomplish that thing. Nerubian Egg and Bloated Python are pretty much the base on which we start. They are very important, so try to get them, okay, in, uh, in the mulligan if possible. And 
try to play them on curve. So if you're on turn two, you want to play a Nerubian egg. If you're on turn three, you want to play a bloated python. You might diverge from that position, but uh, that is very specific. So keep in mind, you want to play Nerubian egg and bloated python as the first things you actually do in this deck. Other than bloated python and Nerubian egg, we also run uh, Burning Blade Acolyte in this deck, which is a very strong death rattle minion. It is also very slow, it's just a 1-1. One, one. But we summon a 5-8 demon spawn with taunt if it dies. And this guy will die pretty much always. Even if he sticks on board, we do have means to take advantage of that. And that is really, really nice for us, so keep that in mind. I do think that uh, Burning Blade Acolyte as a 2 of in this deck is actually correct. We do run two of these. Other than Burning Blade Acolyte and the before mentioned Death Rattles, we also run Death's Head Cultist. This is a sketchy one, I will admit. Okay, I will admit that Death's Head Cultist is kind of sketchy, but this guy has first and foremost a taunt and he restores health to your hero. We will oftentimes take damage because first of all we're, uh, we're very very slow and second of all we do run a true aim crescent and therefore we will take damage. Death Set Cultist helps in um, stabilizing. He is a taunt that the opponent has to take care of and he will restore health to your hero. That is very very nice. If you don't like Death Set Cultist, I will admit this is like the 29th and 30th card in this deck. You might actually think about uh, playing a d -d -d -d, where is it? Where is it? Devouring Actoplasm because it is also a death rattle that spawns something. But I think that the Actoplasm is actually too slow in this deck. But it's definitely a consideration. So keep that in mind and maybe you want to just run Devouring Actoplasm. That's it for the Death Rattle minions though. We don't run any other Death Rattle minions, although we do run Carrion Studies, so we will sometimes get other Death Rattle, but we will talk about that in a second. Besides the Death Rattle minions, we also do run other minions, and mostly Battle Cry minions. The most important one is actually Mognathal Lion. In a Death Rattle deck, this puppy. This cat is insane. Having a Nerubian egg on turn 2, then maybe a bloated python on turn 3 and you can follow up so nicely with the Magnathal Lion. The, the, you will copy the death rattle and spawn a 4-4. Also, uh, this is um, the main reason we even include the Burning Blade Acolyte. If you have a Burning Blade Acolyte on board and you can copy the death rattle with Magnathal Lion, you will spawn most likely a 5-8 taunt. And that is super insane, taking something on the uh, off the board, on the other side of the board, and also spawning a 5-8 taunt, that's just super insane, so keep that in mind. Other than Mognathal Lion, we run something new, which is Monstrous Parrot. This body is super versatile. And actually, also um, something that uh, fills up a role that Mognathal Lion can't fulfill, because Mognathal Lion, Running a Mognathal Lion on board without a death rattle is not very good. Yes, you will deal 5 damage for 4 mana to something on the other side of the board, but not taking advantage of the battle cry, copying a death rattle is not very good. So you keep that in mind that you want to copy a death rattle with Mognathal Lion. Monstrous Parrot doesn't care about that though. Oftentimes, when you play a Nerubian Egg or a Bloated Python on your side of the board on turn 2 or 3 or both, the opponent won't take them off of the board. But if they do, if they do, you just play a Monstrous Parrot on turn 4, spawning a 4-4. A 4-mana 3-4 that spawns a 4-4 might not seem insane, but it kind of is. That's a lot of tempo that you gain. So. Uh, running these two buddies here is actually a big conundrum for the opponent because do they take off the bloated python? Do they not take it off? If they do take it off, we just play Monstrous Parrot. If they do not take it off the board, we just play Mognathal Lion. And that is where the strong side of this deck really takes off 
we do have such a strong turn 4 play uh, and most of the time we will have that in hand on turn 4 so keep that in mind. Other than Mognathal Lion and Monstrous Parrot we do run just other um, utility minions. The first being actually Ace Hunter Kreen. Because this is a legendary I want to talk about what you could actually um, replace this with and I would say you can't really replace this because Ace Hunter Kreen is so insane that you can while attacking your your characters are immune that is an insane effect and sometimes just game winning if you have this buddy put it in this deck for sure if you don't have him though then that's a little bit of a problem because what are you going to uh, what are you supposed to um, play instead? And that is actually a very good question. There is actually not that much that you can play instead. I would actually uh, recommend playing a Tame Beast, which does something quite similar, not really, because you will summon a Beast with Rush, and on turn 5, this becomes a 4 4. So that's actually pretty, pretty nice. And you will have more mana to spend so you can play a bloated plython alongside it um, that's just something very similar for example but other than that i don't really think that you can actually play anything else that is really of interest another possibility would actually be, uh, be once again devouring actoplasm it is also a three mana minion that also kind of is immune because it will spawn a 2-2 but you see, that's a little bit of a problem. I will just once more emphasize how good a Hunter Crean is, especially because we do run True Aim Crescent, and True Aim Crescent with a Hunter Crean and something on board is just super insane. If you have this card, do definitely include it. Other than a Hunter Crean, we also do run Terran Go Feed, which is not so much a tempo minion, but a huge value minion. If you have on turn 2 a Nerubian Egg, you can just slam down Terran on turn 3, spawn a 4-4 and then you will have an Egg inside him, a 1-3 that is already active whenever he dies. And that is really insane. Also this is an insane late game card. If you are on turn 8 and have two things on board, whatever they are, they don't have to be even death rattles, you just slam Terran. You just slam Terran and he will devour them and they will come back whenever he dies. And that is like super insane. But he is also a legendary. And that might be the case why you can't include him because you don't have him. If that is the case, once again devouring Actoplasm. But I think for the role that he serves, actually there is a, another one that you can play which is Wriggling Horror. Wriggling Horror does something very similar, is a little bit cheaper and it also activates Nerubian Egg. So Wriggling Horror is a nice replacement as a one-off for Terran Gorefiend. We will also lower our curve a little bit which is also very nice because then the deck will get faster. But Terran is so much value that if you have him, you should definitely play him. If you don't have him, just play a Wriggling Horror or a Devouring Actoplasm. Alright, so after Terran, we do run one more utility minion. We do actually do run two, I just realized that. And the, uh, the next one I want to talk about is actually Vectis. Vectis is really insane in this deck because we do run quite some death rattles, aren't we? we do run uh, Burning Blade Acolyte, Bloated Python and Nerubian Egg. And Vectus will oftentimes spawn you a f uh, two one ones that also spawn either a 5-8 or a 4-4. And that is uh, super insane. Keep in mind though that on curve a lot of times this will only spawn one well, uh, it will spawn, he will spawn two wells, but one of the wells might not have a death rattle. But that is okay because it's still a nice tempo play. This is 6-6 six, six in stats and oftentimes just getting one death rattle is also very nice. And following up a Vectis for with a Terran Gorfiend that is oftentimes just game ending. Keep that in mind 
Vectis is very very nice. If you don't have him, once again, what do you play instead? Well, that is a very good question because Vectis is very good in this deck. But once again, Wriggling Horror might be the answer you're looking for. Wriggling Horror does give more stuff on board and is a little bit cheaper. It's not as big of a minion as Vectis is, is not as much pressure and you will have to have stuff on board. So another thing that you can actually play once again here is Devouring Actoplasm. It is an additional death rattle minion and it's actually quite nice. Another thing that you can actually play in this deck instead of Vectis which is a little bit more mana but actually kind of okay and free is Savannah Jaime. Yes it's a rare but it's part of the core set and being part of the core set Savannah Jaime is um, very slow and a lot of mana but it spawns two two, uh, two, 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 two hyenas and that's also not to be scoffed at. Another thing that you could actually play instead of Oactus is, uh, where is he? Wait a second. The Imported Tarantula. It's a new, uh, from the new set, not Dead Mines, but from United Installment, and it's an epic. But if you have this card, it does something very similar, but it's a death rattle, and you will summon two 1 1 spiders with Poisonous and Rush. And that's very valuable. And it is also tradable, which means that you can also use it as card draw. So that is also a consideration. Other than Vectis, the last utility minion that we run is Barak Kodovay. Barak is super slow. It's a 5 mana 3 5 and it doesn't have a death rattle, but it has a huge battle cry. He draws you a 1, 2 and 3 cost spell. We are going to talk about the spells just in a second. We do run quite a few and oftentimes Barak is going to draw us 3 cards, which is huge. But on the other side, the problem is that he's super super slow against a quest mage, this won't do that much for us. But against other grindy matchups, against aggro taunt druid, when we have uh, kind of a board, we are not too much behind. Barak will deliver us a lot of stuff that can help us get back on board. Once again, Barak is a big issue because he draws cards. And a lot of time we will run out of cards and Barak will take care of that. But the thing is, if you don't have him, I, I know that this is a legendary. And if you don't have him, there is actually not that much that you can actually run instead. A consideration might be actually just running quick shot, which will draw you a card once you run out of cards. But uh, that's a little bit of an issue. Other things that you could actually run instead of Barak is for example a Loot Holder. But the Death Rattle is not very good and the One Health is a big problem right now in the meta. A lot of things just take care of this and you won't even spawn something on board and that is not too great. Something that you could actually run instead of Barak is Talon Fordring. He is just one card, but he is a taunt and a death rattle. But I think that he's actually too slow for this deck. That is why I didn't include him. Uh, but he is a consideration. He is free and part of the core set, which is why he's free. But he won't draw as many cards as Barak, but it's a death rattle. And that's really, really nice. Another consideration that you could have is Claw Machine. Claw Machine is six mana, which is a lot, which is quite a lot but it will also draw you a minion and give it plus three plus three and that's quite huge in our deck with bloated python or nerubian egg also getting a mocknathal lion with this giving this plus three plus three is just super insane but keep in mind this is six mana that's a lot of mana to spend in the current state of hearthstone maybe talon is just better in that case but keep in mind barak is a lot of card draw if you have him slap him in something that is not a spell but i will count towards spells is true aim crescent this is an epic if you don't have this card you might actually consider running a serpent bloom because it does something similar 
We also have Devouring Swarm already in our deck, so that's not the best thing that you can actually do. But if you have this card, this is just a really insane card that you can run and take advantage of things like Death Rattles pretty nicely. And you can also just go face and trade with True Aim Crescent afterwards, which is also very, very nice. And with, paired with Ace Hunter Cream, you can even run your face into things and just spare some life. And that is really, really insane. If you don't have this card, feel free to ask me in the comments below what you should include instead. Alright, we've covered all the minions and the thing between minions and spells, which is uh, weapons. Let's talk about the spells. We already talked about Barak. Barak is the main reason that we even run so many 1 mana, 2 mana and this 3 mana spell. So let's just go through them. First of all, Devouring Swarm is just a very nice utility card. For 0 mana you get to kill something on the other side of the board and if your stuff dies you will even draw cards with it. So that's very very nice. Keep in mind though, not always will you draw cards with this because sometimes you will just uh, use this to take something off, off on the other side of the board without killing your own stuff. But that is totally okay because if there's something like an Oracle of Elune on the other side of the board, then Devouring Swarm will take care of that and that is super nice. We also run Carrion Studies. Carrion Studies is a super good spell in this deck. It's just one mana and it pays for itself because your next, uh, next one costs one less. You discover Death Rattle Minion and the next one you play, it doesn't have to be the one that you discovered, is going to cost one less. So a nice play for example is on turn one playing a Carrion Studies and on turn two you can play a Bloated Python and that is super good. Although it is very slow, you will have the bloated python on board and it will spawn a 4-4 if taken care of and that is really really nice. Also carrion studies oftentimes provides you with additional things like tonk. Uh, let me just show you, you might know. In a slow matchup this is super good but it's 7 mana why we don't include it in the deck. It is a great death rattle but if we have uh, access to this via carrion studies we can just play it when we discover it so that's really really good also you can get other stuff like talon or claw machine so carrion studies is a nice inclusion in this deck and for sure a two off other than carrion studies we also run tracking tracking is also sometimes just a turn one play because we want to have nerubian egg on turn two and if we don't get it via mulligan Carrying studies and tracking are additional uh, opportunities for us to get Nerubian Egg on turn 2 down. And that is really really nice. Also it gets fetched uh, a lot of times by Barak Kodobane and that is also a reason why we include the tracking. Tracking also lets us discover something from our deck which is uh, a lot of times just great utility. Sometimes you will on turn 5 have something like a bloated python or a Nerubian Egg on board and a big problem on the other side. And then you just go tracking and find a Mognathal Lion, take it off the board and have a 4-4 four -four alongside with your Nerubi neck for example. And that's just great tempo. Other than that, we also run Doggy Biscuit. Doggy Biscuit is from the Deadmine set and it reads tradable, give a minion plus 2 plus 3. After you trade this, give a friendly minion rush. First of all, 2 mana plus 2 plus 3 is great. This is like Mark of the Wild without the taunt, but you could also say that this is a river croc with magnetize. And that is oftentimes good enough because Doggy Biscuit is a buff and we do have very slow minions on board like Nerubi Neck, like Bloated Python. And Doggy Biscuit will help give us favorable trades. Even if you don't want to buff something on board, which is not always going to be the case, you can just trade it. Um, just a little warning, after you trade this, give a friendly minion rush it reads. But I find that oftentimes it won't give the right thing rush. So that's just a little added bonus, but it's not that great to be honest. Uh, I found that additional effect of the tradable to be not that useful. But 
Since you can trade it for just one mana, you get to redraw something, and that is also very, very nice. Doggy Biscuit is a great inclusion in a deck with death rattles that are very slow and that you can actually buff with it. Other than that, we also run Scavenger's Ingenuity. Um, the reason we do run this over... where is he? Uh, the reason why we run this over Selective Breeder is... That it's a spell for Barak. So if you don't run, where is he, Barak? If you don't run Barak, you might actually think about including Selective Breeder because this will give you additional access. We do only run three beasts, which is Bloated Python, which is Mognathal Lion and Monstrous Parrot. And this would, uh, this would give you additional copies of those. But I find it to be very slow. A 1-3 is not too bad you, uh, especially if you if it discovers you something but i think it's just too slow i think that scavenger's ingenuity in the late game is just better because it gives your beast plus two plus two which is just more tempo and getting a magnathal line with a scavenger's ingenuity is just super good it's super insane this will become a seven four sometimes it will even just survive after having uh, been traded also, Monstrous Parrot is great with this, and a Bloated Python you will have with Scavenger's Ingenuity. Another shot at bloated, bloated Python on turn 3 if you play this on turn 2, and the Bloated Python is going to become a 3-4 that spawns a 4-4. So that is just way better than Selective Breeder, uh, especially with Barak in your deck, if you ask me. The next spell we are going to talk about is Ramming Mount. Ramming Mount is banned in Arena. And there is a reason for that, guys, because Ramming Mount is a very unfair card. It reads Give a Minion plus two plus two, which is not too great for three mana. Yes, I will admit that. But, and immune while attacking. When it dies, summon Ram, which also, it's, it's a two two, which also is immune while attacking. And that is the reason why this card is banned in Arena. It is way too slow for aggressive hunter decks, but in our deck, this is just super insane. Having a Nerubian egg on board and getting a ramming mount on top of that is just super insane because the Nerubian egg will not be just a 2-5, uh, no a 2-4, sorry, 2-4 that spawns a 4-4 and a 2-2 two -two that is immune while attacking. Also, this is just so good with Bloated Python, and you don't even have to put this on a Death Rattle minion. A lot of times, I just put this on a Monstrous Parrot, for example, uh, that is all that is on board, and that will give you favorable trades, and that is oftentimes just good enough to win the game. All right, enough talk about the cards already. Let's talk about how to mulligan with this deck. And the mulligan is actually not that hard, to be honest, because you are looking for Nerubian Egg. You're definitely looking for Nerubian Egg. If you have a Nerubian Egg in your starting hand, you just keep it. Don't toss it away. Doesn't matter the matchup. But you won't always get it, so you uh, will you toss everything just to get it. Uh, first things, anything that is beyond 3 mana, you definitely toss. Mognathal Lion, Monstrous Parrot, Barak Kodo Bay and Burning Blade, Acolyte or Vectus, you will draw into those and you don't necessarily have to keep them. There are uh, instances where you keep them but we will talk about those later. A big problem is Bloated Python. Bloated Python is I think always a keep if you have coin. If you have coin you keep this. If not you are actually looking for Nerubian Egg I think but it really depends on the matchup. If you don't have a Nerubian Egg and just a Bloated Python and a huge load of stuff, maybe you want to keep the Bloated Python. Something that you want to keep pretty much always is Carrion Studies and Tracking. Why is that, you might ask? Carrion Studies and a Bloated Python, for example, in your hand is great because on turn one you go Carrion Studies and then you will discover something, maybe even a Nerubian Egg or a Bloated Python. And on turn 2 you can just go with the bloated python for 2 mana and that is really really insane and also have still card advantage. That's really really good. 
you will not always get something like Nerubian Egg or Bloated Th Python. Sometimes you will just get a Devouring Ectoplasm, but that is also a good turn to play. Tracking is pretty much the same reasoning. Since we do run Nerubian Egg and Bloated Python in our deck, tracking will help us on turn 1 to get either Nerubian Egg or Bloated Python. So tracking is also pretty much always a key. Something else that is also very nice to keep is True Aim Crescent because this is so much tempo, not is it just a 1-4 that takes care of, uh, for example, Peasant. Peasant is uh, something that is played by Druid on turn 1 a lot of times and True Aim Crescent will take care of Peasant immediately and that is super super nice. And also, um, it will help us... Uh, to regain Vault. So playing this on turn 1 and a Nerubian Egg on turn 2 means oftentimes that we can pop the Nerubian Egg if we want to on turn 2 and that is really really nice. Also things that have uh, 2 health can be taken off with Bloated Python on turn 3 if you have a True Aim equipped. So that is something to keep in mind. You don't want to keep Doggy Biscuit or Scavenger's Ingenuity uh, in an aggressive matchup. In, in a slow matchup, you might consider having a Scavenger's Ingenuity in your back pocket in the mulligan, for example against uh, Quest Mage or Gerard Rogue, and then swing the board back, and that is really, really nice. Other things that you can keep in your opening hand is, for example, Ramming Mount. If you have coin, then, uh, and have a bloated python, you will go on turn two, coin bloated python and have the python on board. It's going to be pretty much impossible for your opponent to get rid of both parts of the body. And on turn three, uh, three you just slam a ramming mount on your bloated python or the 4-4 hapless handler. And then you pretty much win the game. And you will also have a death rattle to uh, follow up with Mognothal Lion if you want to and Monstrous Parrot if you uh, if you don't have the Mognothal Lion. So that is something to keep in mind. Other things to keep in mind against slow matchups, for example against a uh, combo druid, is Terran Gore Fiend. It is quite slow and it destroys your board. Yes, but it's so much value and you can kill it off somehow, if you can kill it off somehow, that Terran Gore Fiend might be a consideration for slower matchups. But against aggressive matchups, and pretty much always, you want to keep Nerubian Egg and Bloated Python to have a turn 2 and turn 3 play, so you can spike out with Magnathal Line and Monstrous Parrot afterwards, which one of those you are pretty much guaranteed to draw in the course of the game. Burning Blade Acolyte is never a keep, because it's way too slow, but it's still an inclusion, because if you can slam this down on turn 5 without dying, you can follow up with a Mognathal line or Monstrous Pirate and that's just super insane. So that's pretty much it for the deck guys. Thanks so much for watching and if you have any questions, if you wanna uh, make improvements to the deck, if you wanna ask me what you could play instead of a certain card, don't hesitate to put it in the comments, I will answer you. I'm a very small YouTuber and I do check the comments very often and I do answer pretty much immediately if I can. So don't hesitate to ask me and see you next time. Hey you, thanks for making it this far. If you've made it this far, maybe you want to consider liking and subscribing. It's not so much about helping me out, but it helps other people find this video. And you can always change your mind afterwards. So thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Maybe.